So I'm guessing. I'm not sure what you say about that. Okay. Well, I okay. think Santa is going to copy and paste your sign. Uh, I think it's there on, on the screen. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me take a look at it first, real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that that's, looks really good. So, Eva, why don't you go ahead. Now, everybody, this we have a history book, and uh, the history book is called The Suppressed History of America. It's very interesting. We're going chapter by chapter here. The assignment this week was chapter 5 and chapter 6, and we have Eva's summary for chapter 6. Um, does anybody by chance have chapter five? Anybody? Anybody? Five, four, three, two, one. I thought I told you Marwa. Uh, Marwa, but Marwa is not talking. She refuses to talk. No, 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 no problem. Which, uh, which, uh, which book are you talking about? The, the, uh, the history of America. Yes, the history of America, chapter five. Do you? Can you tell us about that? I Okay, I have uh, uh, a summary for the, the James and Jane Peach story and um, non uncompleted summary of <laughs> of uh, uh, chapter uh, of Prince Madoc. No, okay, so you, so you have an incomplete summary of Prince Madoc. Yeah. Let me hear it. <laughs> okay, I will send this first. And... Great. Yeah, this is, uh, I know it's tough, but uh, but we can do it. Santa, right now, Marwa is sending you uh, the Chapter 5, and you can just call it Prince Maddock, Prince Maddock, M-A-D-O-C. Oh, you have it all. Great. Santa, can you mute your microphone, please? Sorry. Everybody keep those mics muted. Oh, Gulia's joined. Let me say hi to Gulia while we get ready. Hi, Gulia. Hi, Kochi. Hi, guys. Hi, Santa. Your kids sound silent. Yeah. <sighs> Is your husband taking care of them? No, no, no. We just came from the shopping, and they just... Uh, Camille is sleeping, and they just be calm, you know. That's behave very, very calm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's time for exactly the time for Audible, uh, for Audio Book Club. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, Marwa, did you send? Uh, great, great, great. This is Marwa's summary here. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. So I want to... Santa, the order is different. I want Marwa to go first. Um, that's chapter five. And then uh, let's go to Eva. Great. Okay, looks really good there. Um, Marwa, go ahead and start reading what you have. This is chapter five. Prince Madoc, Welsh Natives, and Legends of the Mandan, capital M. Go for it, Marwa. Okay. Uh, so this, this chapter contains evidence of uh, European explorers and travelers uh, who came to America centuries before Columbus. Uh, in what is today western Montana, uh, some explorers uh, discovered Welsh Indians who spoke strange language uh, those Indians descended from Welsh Prince Madoc, who fled to America be because of the violence or, uh, at his homeland. Uh, other discoveries su suggested that uh, there were travelers from Ireland sailed to America and left ancient uh, fortifications that... Sorry? Mm -hmm. That share? Where we are. <laughs> Yeah, that share similarities to Welsh forts. Uh, there's documentation suggests that the uh, ma the Mandan, uh, the native who lived in North Dakota, have European origins origins because of their unique behaviors, appearance, and uh, agricultural techniques. Uh, the Mandan appeared to have a wide range of skin and hair colors. Excellent job. That's that's not a short. That's not an incomplete summary. I think it's complete. Uh, you hit everything very very nicely. Very good. Very good. 
Um, there's, a, there's a couple of obviously uh, little problems here and there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I will take this and in our email newsletter, I'll fix the grammar for you, okay? Okay. So what Mara was talking about are the three different subjects. Prince Maddock. Prince Maddock is from Wales, which is in the UK. Um, you In the UK, we have uh, England, Scotland, and Wales. And Prince Maddock is from Wales, from a long time ago, from about, what was it, Marwa, like 1100? 1100? The year 1100? I think, yeah, one. Uh, I'm going to look it up here. I'll, I'll quick. I think it was. Yeah, 1170. Yeah, from the 1100s. So he was uh, 300 years before Columbus. And they say, they, they, the, the story is he went to America and then went back to Wales, and then went back to America, then went back to Wales, then went back to America three times, and each time he went to America, he brought hundreds of Welsh people. He brought them to escape the war, just like uh, Marwa said. So this is a, a well-known story among some historians, but if you go to an American school, Nobody talks about this. This is, uh, nobody talks about it. It is suppressed history. But once again, it's not just a story. There seems to be proof. Now, that's difficult to show you, but there were Indians, and the Indians were called the Welsh natives. Santa, can you go back up there to the title? And we see Prince Maddock, and then we see Welsh natives. And they, in the book, they first spelt it Welch, W-E-L-C-H. But that's just the old spelling. The proper spelling now is Welsh, W-E-L-S-H. And the Welsh natives spoke a language that sounded like Welsh. Yes, Welsh people have a different language from English. Um, and these Welsh natives also looked differently, and they lived differently. There's another Indian tribe, American Indian tribe, in the Midwest called the Mandans. And the Mandan people really looked European. Some of them had dark brown skin, but some of them had almost perfectly white skin. Some of them had blonde hair. Some of them had red hair. Some of them had black hair. Some of them had brown eyes. Some of them had green eyes. Some of them had blue eyes. If you understand genetics, then you understand black hair and brown hair are dominant genes. So if a brown-haired, a black-haired, brown-eyed person marries a blonde-haired, blue-eyed person, almost guaranteed their children will have brown hair or black hair and brown eyes. The dark traits are much stronger than the light traits. So for these Indians to have such light skin and colorful eyes means that the genes probably from Europe were very, very strong in their genetics, in their bodies. There's no question, genetically, that these people, this group of Indians, had European ancestors. Very amazing story. And it's amazing because nobody knows about it. Very few, very few people know about this. Um, everybody says in school Columbus discovered America, but 
wait a minute, maybe it was discovered by another man from Wales. And they have other ideas. Maybe it was from Ireland. Maybe it was from uh, Scandinavia. They're not really sure. But one thing that we can say is that these Indians definitely had European blood. And for some reason, they do not talk about that in the history books. Great job. Marwa, did you like the chapter? Did you understand the chapter well? Yeah, I understand it, yeah. Are you surprised? Um, not very surprised, but, but I think that Christopher Columbus is the, uh, the successful one. So they mention him, or maybe for other re reasons, but, um, but yeah, I'm not surprised that the, 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 because there is a people uh, in, uh, in this land before him, of course. Yeah, there was a story, right? Many stories, I think, in this, uh, in this chapter specifically. Yeah, I think uh, as an American, I think it, the story is really surprising to me because um, we, I, I have never heard of blonde-haired, blue-eyed Indians. This is the first time I heard about it. So after listening to this story, I went online and did lots of more uh, internet searches, and uh, it's an amazing uh, story, and it's it completely new to me. And like you, I'm not surprised. Uh, it would make sense. It makes sense. Uh, but still, at the same time, uh, being the first time I heard it, it was uh, it was surprising. Great job. Your summary was really perfect, Marwa. Thank you. Yep, very pleased. It was a difficult chapter. <laughs> Good job, Mahmoud. Mahmoud is taking credit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mahmoud. <laughs> and he introduced me this time. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Okay, let me go to Eva. Now, Eva took the next chapter. And the chapter's title was Voyagers of the Pacific Coast and the Kennewick Man. Now, once again, I'm going to take the screen. Hold on a second. Um, and I'm going to show you Prince. Okay, here's Prince Maddock. Um, I'm going to show you uh, Lewis and Clark map. So... Uh, this is, we're studying a book that basically follows Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark are two Americans that their goal was to explore the West. So the United States, the people of the Americans a long time ago, around 1800, all the Americans lived over here in New York and Georgia and Florida, and the government wanted to expand to the West. They wanted to expand the United States. But this was all Indians. It was very dangerous territory. This part was actually owned by France. This was Spanish territory. This was Indians. Nobody really knew what was up here. Nobody really knew what was happening in that area. So our story has taken us basically to right here. Right now, we are here, and we've discovered the Mandan people, and uh, the Prince Madoc, probably, maybe, he established a home here, in this area of the United States, 300 years before Christopher Columbus. At this point, the story, chapter 6, the story continues, and... Uh, the Lewis and Clark, they come to the Rocky Mountains, and their ultimate goal is to get to the Pacific Ocean. So, the name of the chapter is Voyagers of the Pacific Coast. This is the Pacific Coast. And the Kennewick Man. And once again, let us go back to Eva, uh, who's going to give us uh, her 
description of chapter six. And before we start, let me give the screen back to Santa. And we'll let Santa get set up here to share. And just a second. Hello. Hi. Uh, is that Chan? Hi. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome, Chan. Welcome. Problem with my internet connection just now, so. Oh, uh, it sounds good now. Very good connection now. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, Santa, can you show us uh, Eva's summary? Thank you very much. Eva, go for it. Oh yes. Um, before I start, I yep. want to say that um, why uh, I've chosen this one, this chapter. Um, uh, so because um, I was uh, the mouth uh, where um, Columbia River um, goes into the Pacific. So you so, were there. Uh, yes. Yeah. I was there on one of my trips with my son when I was with him. So um, it was <laughs> a little bit very nice feeling, yes. But and then when we um, draw al um, along th this area, so he showed me that there is a U.S. Army uh, base, but uh, I didn't. Mm, uh, pay attention to it because I didn't know about it. Now, if I were there, I would be more <laughs> um, interested in it, yeah. and it would be much more um, interesting and powerful. Much more meaningful, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, you know that's that's such a great story. Um, and everybody, as you listen to this book, as you listen to our summaries, if you ever have the chance to visit the United States, um, these are things that you can think about. And like um, Eva just said, she's been to uh, the Columbia River, to the mouth of the Columbia River with her son. And... This is where the Pacific Ocean uh, meets the uh, uh, American rivers. And she's been there, but it was just like, oh, yeah, a river in the ocean. Okay, nice. But now that she knows about this story, she has a different appreciation uh, for being there. And uh, she's read about it. And she knows, she knows more <laughs> than most Americans know. So that's great. I love it. So it wasn't... It wasn't just like uh, it was nice. I I can say that I was smitten by many views. Only it was nice. It was very nice. It was very beautiful, huh? Oh yes, really. It was wonderful. That's great Something to hear. I I haven't seen before. You know, um, the world is so um, different and. Uh, in any corner, the beauty is much different, but it's still the beauty. It's something uh, which uh, can't be repeated yeah. on any other place of the world. I very well put. Yeah, it's you know all around the world we have such beautiful places, and you and that's the key. Um, a beauty that you'll find with the Columbia River uh, is not repeated anywhere else in the world. Now, that doesn't mean another river is also as beautiful. Of course, you know, yeah, other rivers are just way. as beautiful. In a different way. That's right. That's exactly right. Very well put. Very well put. Okay. okay. Please read mm -hmm. your summary to us. Okay. Chapter 3. The title of this chapter is divided into two parts. And so the chapter is. The first one is devoted to the Lewis and Clark voyage west and tries to describe it from several points of view. Exploration of the nature, landscape, flora and fauna, life of tribal people they met, their housing, training, ceremonies, horses they breed, 
there are mutual relationships, especially the credit of taking some of them with the expedition and the unexpected adventure on the way in the Pacific coast. Natural obstacles as the Rocky Mountains, huge rivers, weather. The second part of the chapter shows us different opinions on Kennerickman, whose discovery was has triggered many scientists and pseudoscientists to various theories, conclusions, and speculations about his origin. The most surprising is the connection with Japan and China. Once again, uh, excellent summary. This is exactly what I want. Your vocabulary was a little tough, but that's okay. Uh, really, I mean, you know, flora and fauna, those are tough words. But My vocabulary is very bookish. Yeah, but that's absolutely fine. It's, ab you know, Santa, can you take us back or split the screen if you could, please? Oh, thank you, thank you. And take me back to flora and fauna, that line I want to see. Great. Bingo. Okay. So, like, for example, flora, we can just say, uh, whoops, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that's okay, Sam. That's too much. Uh, I'll let Santa get set up here first. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, with the word flora there, we can just say flowers and trees, and fauna would be the wildlife, the deer and the antelope and whatever, buffalo, and, and they talked about that, and of course the bears. It was very exciting. Uh, the description was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was very nice. Um, oh, that's okay, Santa. Let me, let me see this first. Uh, once again, I'll fix the grammar later, but it's a really great job. Um, yeah, the first part of the chapter talked about how, once again, especially getting to the Rocky Mountains. So I'm going to take the screen again just to show you the map. Uh, where am I? Make presenter. And Columbia River. Okay. So um, what we have here, just to give people an idea. Hopefully I can make this bigger. Um, ba -bum, and let me change my pen. Okay, so uh, this is the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River uh, goes from here. This is the Mississippi River and this cuts all the way through America. So the Mississippi River, many Americans, many explorers were here and, and this was pretty well known. They wanted to go west, and they figured the Missouri River, you can see here, this is the Missouri River. The Missouri River was probably the best way to get to the ocean. They knew, logically, there must be an ocean. So they took the uh, Missouri River, and it kept getting north, getting colder and colder. They found the Mandan villages here, and eventually they kept going, and they were really happy when they found the end of the river and they saw these mountains. But these mountains are unbelievably not nice. <laughs> if, you have, if you have a car, it's fine. But if you're walking or with a horse or with a canoe, these are terrible, terrible, terrible places to be. So they managed very difficulty with great difficulty to get through the Rocky Mountains. It was very tough. And on this side of the Rocky Mountains, probably in Washington, some people think Oregon, but probably Washington, they met other Indians who were very, very kind to them. And they helped them. And they were able eventually to get to basically, the. they could see the Pacific Ocean, but uh, it was very difficult to get there because of those forests and the weather and the river was very violent. It was a very interesting, very interesting story. That's the first part of the chapter. And then the next part of the chapter talks about the Kennewick Man. And the Kennewick Man was actually discovered much, much, much later. I think the 1970s, some people discovered a skeleton. And the scientist, 
you know, dated the skeleton, and they realized the skeleton was probably 9,000 years old, super old. And they called this skeleton the Kennewick Man because he was found in Kennewick, Washington. I think it's Washington. Um, so 9,000 years old, this is amazing. So scientists want to study the Kennewick skeleton and find out about the genes, the DNA. They want to discover. They want to find out more information. But the Indians, the American Indians who lived in this area said, no, 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 no. We have a law that says you must give any skeletons, any bones, you must give them to the Indians because they are our ancestors and we must bury them properly. So if you ever find any skeletons, you have to give them to the Indians. But the scientists said, wait, 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 wait. This skeleton is 9,000 years old. He's not an Indian. Therefore, we, we don't have to give them to you. We can study him. So this was actually a big problem, a big legal problem. Now, the shocking thing was they did some genetic research and they realized that this 9,000-year-old skeleton named Kennewick Man probably was Japanese. And not the modern, not the, you know, not the modern Japanese, but the original genetic Japanese person from the southern islands, probably around Okinawa in that area. That the ge genetics of the Japanese Okinawa man was basically the same as this guy they found here in Oregon. So this is a very, very interesting story now. We have basically Irish and Welsh people living here. We have Japanese people living over here. So what's going on? What is the United States? Who are the Indians? It's a big mystery. It's a very big, interesting story. And uh, once again, in school, they don't teach you about the Irish people, about the British people, about the Norwegian people in North Dakota. They don't teach you about the Kennewick man. In fact, the shocking information was the place they discovered the Kennewick man, this very special place, the United States government covered. They covered the area with cement. They covered it. They buried the area with cement. Why did they do that? In order to not find anything else. Yes, that's the reason. Uh, so let me give it back to Santa. The Kennewick man that's spelt there in the chapter uh, rehab. I'll show you. We'll show you in a second. Uh, ba -bum -ba -bum. Give it to Santa, make presenter. And, uh, and once again, excellent summary from Eva there, the Kennewick man. Excellent summary about that. And thank you, Santa, for getting all of that stuff there. Um, yeah, really, now once again, if you don't like history, maybe the story's boring. But for me, I love ancient history. And... Uh, it's fascinating. The stories they talk about are very interesting. But, Gulia says, I should pay more respect to this book. It is a really good book. It is a really good book. There's the Kennewick man. Um, and he's 9,000 years old. And he's Japanese. And he lived in Washington. <laughs> so, yeah, he's one of, one of the first immigrants to the United States. Um, so, yeah, it's a fascinating book with very interesting stories that people don't know about. Why do they only teach Americans that Columbus discovered America? Well, Marwa gave us a good answer. 
Columbus discovered modern America. So he's in the modern textbooks. But we should always remember that before the history we know, there was a history before that. And most of the history we know actually has its origin in the history before that. So for me, it's always fascinating to go back into history and to discover the stories they talked about, the places they went. Personally, one of my favorite histories is the histories of the Sumerians. Santa, uh, Santa can you type Sumerian? Um, so after this book, no. <laughs> after this book, uh, maybe I will uh, look for a, a book about Sumeria. Yeah, that's right, the Sumerian. That's right, Rehab. Yeah. Uh, which is basically Iraq, Iraq, that area. Fascinating, fascinating, amazing stories. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, Mahmoud, is that Sumerian in Arabic? Yes. How do you say it? Sumeria. Sumeria. Sumeria, yes. Sumeria. Uh, Amir says, I love ancient history as well. Me too. It's just beautiful. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. Um, it's tremendous. Yeah, it's, it's really great stuff. Did you know, most of you probably know, but did you know uh, in the Bible, Abraham was probably Sumerian? <laughs> I hope I, that doesn't make people angry. Nobody's saying anything. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Marwa. History, history in a book can be very boring, but uh, history in a story can be really interesting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, Abraham was probably Abraham. I think everybody who has a religion probably knows about Abraham. Thank you, Santa. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's most likely he came from Ur. I think the city was Ur. Is that right, Ur? Does anybody know? You are. I think Abraham came from Ur, which was a Sumerian city. Rehab says yes. Everybody else, like Santa said, nothing. <laughs> yeah, in Iraq. Ur is in Iraq, right? Does anybody know? Everybody's leaving me to die. No, uh, not, yeah, it's maybe from Iraq, I'm just asking. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ur, Mesopotamia, right, yeah. I'll just, I'm going to take the screen from Santa again, because I'm, otherwise I'm embarrassing myself. Uh, so, da -da -da -da, uh, Ur, just so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, Ur is an uh, important Sumerian city in ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, located in modern Tel El Mukaya in South Iraq. Yeah, so this is probably where uh, uh, the city's other biblical link is to the patriarch, and they're going to say Abraham. Oh, Canaan. Abraham, there you go. Yeah, Abraham left Ur. See, Coach Shane is pretty smart. <laughs> Uh, I really, it, one day, I really hope that I'm able to uh, uh, explore uh, Iraq. It's just got some of the most amazing history. Uh, yeah, personally, it, it's just, it's the probably, uh, you know, the root of modern uh, culture. Uh, probably comes from Mesopotamia uh, in that area, yeah. Yeah, all nations up, have their ups and downs. That's the thing about humans. We have every nation has its ups and downs and ups and downs. And if we go through time long enough, it'll be up again and down again, up again and down again. Yeah, that's for sure.
Okay, so anyway, that's the history, uh, and uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Marwa and Eva, you did an excellent job. I'm very pleased uh, with your summaries. I'll fix the grammar, and I'll send that out in the um, uh, newsletter. Now, we don't have much time left, and I have another uh, class to do. I'm going to hand over the presentation to Santa, uh, and I think Gulia has sent a great summary of some other story. Hold on a second. Uh, to be honest, guys, I'm not listening to that book. Was that too much information? But I will. Uh, I, I certainly will. Um, I know that Marwa really liked the story. She wrote about it on our page, James and the Giant Peach. Uh, and we're going to listen to Gulia's summary. Uh, so, Gulia, are you there? Yes, Katrin. Go for it. Tell us about James and the Giant Peach. What kind of crazy story is this? Katrin, I thought that you know everything. Katrin, I cannot believe that you didn't read this book. <laughs> I did it. It's embarrassing, but no, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is uh, this is a good example of American dream. Exactly how your dream come true in how your dreams come true in America. How the boy from England who lost his parents and lived miserable, unhappy, isolated life with his rude, unkind aunts, with help of magic, took a long, dangerous trip from England to America. This is a fairy tale, and of course the boss, uh, the boy wasn't alone during his travel. He had friends. Gigantic insects, grasshopper, spider, centipede, earthworm, worm, silkworm, glowworm, it's a firefly, and ladybug. And he traveled in, in enormous pitch. They floated in ocean, almost were eaten by sharks, rose up and flew among the clouds, and strings bended with 502 seagulls met furious cloud men were broken away from the seagulls by plane, plane went down and almost were crashed against the earth and were picked upon the pinnacle of the Empire State Building. Almost were caught by policemen, but after they retold their story, happy, happily lived in America, became rich and successful. Wow. Keep going. Santa, there you go. Yes, I wish everyone to realize their own American dream. Inside, outside their country, it doesn't matter. There you go, Just yeah. Be happy. I, I like it, yeah. The American dream is a, a thought. It doesn't necessarily mean America. Of course, uh, America with, with its uh, uh, history, uh, at least the past, not, not so much these days, uh, it was something that, that, that was pretty big. Excellent summary. I loved it. This sounds like a really interesting book. I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to fix some of your grammar. And uh, you know what, you guys? I'm going to do something special for you guys. Um, I will make a recording of the summaries after I fix them, just so you can hear my voice and my pronunciation on some of those. Does that sound okay? Yes. And Kotshen? In this book, I found, uh, maybe I knew about this, but this, anyway, it was a surprise for me, but the, some information about the insects, for example, how the uh, grasshopper uh, make the music. Uh, <laughs> By rubbing yes. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, how, uh, where's the ears? Right, 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 right. So, so yes, you didn't know. On the me. legs, yes, just. So you got a science lesson. Yes. yes, yes. And I think I also thought that I should find this book in, the, in Russian, for example, and read my, to my children because somehow this, there is a, uh, information which is uh, interesting. And like you know a what sentence, you should do? Yeah, it's a great story. You know what you should uh -huh. do? You should find it in yeah. English and in Russian if you can. Uh, and and maybe you should give the story to them in Russian, and then get the mm -hmm. movie in English, and your children will mm -hmm. love the movie. 
-hmm. Yes, and I found that Disneyland made some cartoon. Oh, so great. Maybe great. I should find, yes. yes. Excellent, excellent. In English. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go back to Marwa. Now, Marwa, you have a summary for the same story too, correct? Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Santa, can you take us up there? And we'll listen to Marwa's summary too. Go ahead, Marwa. Okay. okay. Um, the, my summary, uh, I think of if I if, uh, if I tell it to uh, to a children. Is so your so your okay. summary is for for children. You're thinking of children, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, once upon a time, there was a little boy. He lived in a beautiful house nearby the sea with his beloved parents. One day. A huge rhino attacked his parents and killed them. Uh, he left his lovely house and moved to live with his, uh, with his two horrible aunts. They beat him with no reason and ordered him uh, to work all the time. He became so miserable, lonely, and began to cry. In this moment, a strange and wonderful thing happened. An old man gave him a magical crystal. Once they, uh, they are eaten, marvelous things happen to whoever eats them. Uh, he caught them and returned back to his aunt's house, but suddenly he fell and these magical things were seen and disappeared under the earth. He felt uh, they lost forever, but uh, but so what, what if they meet an, uh, an insect and get their full power? He returns sadly to his unhappy life. Santa! Ah. <laughs> then his aunts... Okay. Sorry. The, uh, then his aunts uh, recognize a huge and fabulous peach in their garden. It grows bigger and bigger as a miracle. They ordered him uh, to bring it and told everybody to, to come and pay to see it. They made much money. Uh, later, our poor little boy walked slowly toward the giant beach. Then he noticed a, a, a hole beside it. He crawled in, uh, into it and found huge insects, spider, grasshopper, centipede, ladybug, earthworm, silkworm, and glowworm. They told him that they met his magical crystals and ate them and become so big. He decided to tr uh, they decided to travel uh, with their giant peach to live in Peru place. Uh, they struggled in a marvelous journey. Uh, they fought uh, sharks and flew with uh, seagull. They crossed the ocean and reached the, uh, the new land. They told all the people about their story, and our little hero wrote it in a book that we are reading now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It sounds great. Our little hero. That's really perfect. Now, um, I have to say, if you listen to uh, the summaries, Gulia and Marwa's summaries are very different. And actually, Marwa gave us a summary of the story and Gulia gave us a, a critique a critique can you spell that out Santa critique yes uh, a critique and the idea of a critique is um, adding a summary and uh, opinion kind of together. So mixing the idea of a summary and opinion together is this idea of a critique. Uh, so talking about the American dream, that was the opinion, but then giving us specifics, that's part of the summary. And both of them are great. I enjoy listening to both of them. Uh, I want to say an excellent job. Uh, I just found out that Rehab also made a summary. I wish I had known that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Uh, I would have fired Marwa 
and let you <laughs> read yours. But let's do this. Next week, uh, Rehab, I want uh, you to send in a summary too, and we will definitely let you read it. Now, uh, I will, once again, as a gift to you guys, I will record all of your summaries. So if you sent in a summary, make sure you send it to Santa, and I will uh, fix the grammar, and I will record them for you guys so that you can hear them together. Uh, and uh, I want to say, great job. I'm very pleased. Uh, I'm very pleased. Many people enjoyed the James and the Giant Peach. That's great. Uh, the history, I understand it's very tough. <laughs> but I want you guys to be strong. So, Pache, yes. And uh, uh, the first book is tough because of the vocabulary. Of, of, I, I, I cannot understand why it's so hard for me. I think that's what, right. What do you think? There's two reasons, two reasons, uh, three reasons. Number one, vocabulary. Number two, you don't know about American history. And number three, um, or maybe it's just two reasons. Hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> vocabulary. Ah, and number three, because you're listening, not reading. Okay? So vocabulary, unfamiliar subject, and listening. That is a recipe for disaster. If you have difficult vocabulary, an unfamiliar subject, and you can only listen, your comprehension will be at a minimum. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to remind you guys, when you listen to the story, uh, using a map, a map will be very beneficial. Understanding, everybody, understand the story, the history story, is basically a murder story. And Lewis, Lewis, uh, Lewis and Clark are explorers. They're exploring America for the United States. They discovered many, many amazing things. And in the end, Lewis was murdered. And the question is why? Why was he murdered? And one answer, perhaps, is he discovered too many things the United States did not want to make public. That's one idea. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. Uh, but this is the idea. It's actually a very fascinating story, but it is difficult, Kulia. So don't worry. If you're not catching it, don't worry. Uh, but hopefully after the summary, after I talk about it, hopefully it's a little bit more understandable and interesting. Questions. I'm going to finish it up here. Uh, I've got a busy day, I, but I'll take any other questions that anybody has. We need to figure out our next chapters. Obviously, in the history book, chapter 7 and chapter 8, Giants in America, Ancient America, and the Hero Returns, chapter 7 and chapter 8. Uh, I don't know what's coming up. In the uh, audio, in the other book, let me go to my Audible. Audible. Um, library. My book. I wish I just do one chapter. What do you think we should do, Santa? <laughs> so the next chapter is Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay. Give us, yeah, you know, Mahmoud, I was thinking about that. Maybe we should just do one chapter of the history. That's fine. Let's do that. Uh, for, so for the history, only chapter seven, giants in ancient America. Don't worry about two chapters. We'll just do one. Chapter seven, giants in ancient America. And in our other book, we'll do Fantastic Mr. Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Does that sound okay, everybody? So two chapters, but from two different books. Great. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys are weak, weak, weak. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh, because I wanted you guys, to, to be honest, I was talking to Santa earlier. I wanted you guys to do Chapter 7 and Chapter 8, and I wanted Mr. Fox and the Enormous Crocodile. I wanted four chapters, but Santa said, let's just do one each, and now you guys are just also agreeing one each. Yeah, I like I like university style. Read more, 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 more. But uh, you guys, I understand. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Lita should be the author. I, I want Lita to read all of these stories in proper pronunciation, please. Imagine you're... Now, actually, once again, if you have children, if you have children, uh, James and the Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox, these upcoming stories are wonderful for kids. So if you have children or nieces and nephews or grandchildren... I want you to really understand the stories, and perhaps in your language, you can retell the stories to your children, or your nieces and nephews, or your grandchildren. Uh, they're beautiful stories. They're very nice, exciting stories. And you can change the culture in the stories, change the places, and have fun with the stories. Uh, and uh, it's, it's great. History's great, too. Damn it. <laughs> Thank you very much. No questions. I am out of here. Uh, our next hangout. Yeah, nobody has recommended a different time. So if you want a different time, if you would like a different time, you can request it. But so far, I haven't had any. So May 7th, 10 a.m. Chicago is our next hangout. May 7th, 10 a.m. Chicago time. Two chapters in the history. Giants in Ancient America, and in the Ronald Dahl audio collection. One chapter, one chapter. Ah, yes, yeah, but uh, two chapters together, one in each book. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> Mr. Fox. <laughs> oh, Mahmoud is on top of it. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. You, I have another hangout. If you're a DDM student, I have several DDM students here. Uh, we have a DDM Live in 50 minutes, so I hope that I see you in about 50 minutes. Have a lovely evening or afternoon or morning, and I will see you all in two weeks. Enjoy the stories. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Coach Shane. Thank you. Have a good weekend, Thank guys. You. Oh, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Take care. Thank you, Bye, Coach Bye, guys. Great talking to you, Coach Bye. 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 Bye